course three, investigation four. We are just going to do a quick lesson here about being able to draw geometric solids. I will say that on this video it might be tough for me to really explain all that goes into drawing 3D objects in two dimensions like we do on paper, but I will do my absolute best. So the first thing that we need to talk about is what are some of the different pieces of a three-dimensional object. So I'll just start reading here. Close figures that we draw on paper like polygons and circles are two-dimensional. They have length and width, but not depth because we have them flat. Physical objects in the world around us are in three dimensions. We have length, width, and depth. Two-dimensional figures are called plane figures because they are contained in a plane. Three-dimensional figures are sometimes called space figures because they oc occupy space and aren't just in one plane. Think about a plane as not the thing that flies through the sky, of course, but a um, two-dimensional object or space like a whiteboard is a plane because it has length and width, but not really depth, okay? Think about a wall. If you were to just have the surface of the wall, we would have a two-dimensional plane. Space figures, though, with three dimensions are called geometric solids. That's typically what we actually have around us in the world. The terms face, edge, and vertex, or in the plural, vertices, refer to specific fe features of a solid. The face of a polyhedron is a polygon. So the face is a two-dimensional object like that surface on this rectangular prism. Or the face of a polyhedron, um, or sorry, I already said that, two faces meet at an edge. Okay, so if I have this front face, and if I have this side face, this right here, um, in, I'll put it in green, that right there where they meet is called an edge. And then if I actually have two different um, edges or the different edges that meet, I can't talk, I'm sorry. If I have three different faces, we have their edges all in green. If I have three of them meeting all together, I would call that a vertex. So I'll put that vertex right there in red. Where those three faces um, meet, we have all the different edges, and where those edges meet, we call that a vertex. In this case, we have a bunch of different ver vertices. One, two, three, four. You can think about that one in the back, and it's one that comes down like that. And then we have a vertex over here and here. So in this figure, we actually have eight different vertices where all of those edges meet. Now we have a lot of different geometric solids, and we have this whole table that describes all of them. So a polyhedron, um, this is just a general term that identifies a solid that has faces that are polygons. So polygons being flat faces, meaning we don't have any curved surfaces or edges. So when we get down to like the cone and the sphere, those are some curved edges um, and faces. We wouldn't actually call those polyhedrons, all right? But a prism is a type of polyhedron that has parallel congruent faces. Very important here. Parallel and congruent faces means that like with this triangular prism, I have a face right here that is parallel and congruent to this face down here. If they're parallel, that means that the planes that they are on, not just the lines, but the planes that they are on, will never touch or meet if we were to extend them out into infinity, okay? Or for example, with this box, we have a face right here and a face back here. Those are parallel and congruent. Congruent meaning they are exactly the same. Once again, if we were to extend those planes out forever, then they would never meet, they're parallel. Going on to pyramid, this is a type of polyhedron with lateral, surface lateral surfaces that narrow to a point. So instead of having two bases, we just have this one base and the different sides come up to just one point or this triangular base that just comes up to one point with the sides. We don't have a second base. A cylinder is when we do have some curved edges, so it's no longer technically called a polyhedron, but we have two bases. It's actually a prism, a t kind of a type of prism. And we have our two congruent bases that are parallel with this um, curved side 
that is the lateral surface area. And then we have a cone. Once again, very similar to a pyramid, but with some curved faces. Just one base, but the sides come up to a point. And lastly, a sphere. If you can imagine a center here, every single point on this sphere is exactly the same distance from that center point, okay, in every single direction. I can't draw enough um, lines to actually show that that center is exactly the same distance from every single point on the sphere. All right, prisms can further be classified by the shapes of their bases. Be careful though, as far as what is the base. Like taking this triangular prism, you might be tempted to say that this base down here, this rectangle is the base. It's not. How we define the bases is those two parallel and congruent sides. So the faces that are parallel and congruent are the triangles. They're the same distance away from each other, same shape, same exact size. So we call this a triangular prism since triangles are the base. Or like this rectangular prism, we actually have a lot of sides that could potentially be our base. Let's say these ones are our base. They are the same and they're parallel, calling this a rectangular prism. And then the ones that are the same and parallel from each other are these hexagons. So they are the same distance away, same shape, same size, so this is a hexagonal prism. Okay, now continuing on, one type of prism is a rectangular prism, which all of the faces are rectangles, and one specific type of rectangular prism is a cube, when all of the faces are congruent. So for example, if I were to draw a cube here, we have squares as all of the faces, and so we would call this a cube because all of them, all of the faces are congruent squares. All right, now the pyramids of Egypt have a square base. A pyramid with a square base has how many faces, edges, and vertices? Well, let's draw it. How we draw these pyramids, and we'll look at this in particular down below, is kind of a squished square. It's really just a rhombus. And I put a point up at top that connects with all of the uh, vertices of this square. And here we have a, uh, a square base and it is a pyramid. So let's count how many faces, edges, and vertices. Well, let's start with the faces. I always have one as my base. And then in this case, I have um, one triangle going up to the, to the point at the top, two, three, and four. So add them all together and I have five faces. Then I wanna look at the edges. I'll highlight them in this lime green. My edges, so one, two, three, four. And then coming down from the peak, five, six, seven, and eight. So I have eight edges and then vertices I'll put in pink. And where all of those edges come together, we have one, two, three, and four and one right up top, so five total vertices. Okay, so how do the number of um, faces a pyramid in a pyramid relate to the shape of its base? How do the number of faces of a prism relate to the shape of its base? So if I were to take this um, and kind of make a table of it, let's say that I have a square base for my pyramid. We'll start with the pyramids. If I have a square base, it's interesting that I have five faces. All right, so with my pyramid, a square base gives me five faces. Whereas a triangular pyramid, okay, and you can go ahead and draw that. I'll draw one over here. Here's my triangle, and then my pyramid comes down like that. So I have one, two, three, four faces. All right, what if I had um, a, let's see, a pentagonal? and I would have six faces. Hexagonal would have seven. And continue on forever and ever. It looks like for every side length that I have, I have one more face. So my three sides on my triangle give me four faces. Four sides on my square give me five faces. Five, face, five sides on my pentagon gives me six faces. So it's like the side amount plus one. Okay, so that's for a pyramid. What about for a prism? Well, let's see, if I have a triangular prism, that's, I'll just bring us back to this picture up here. 
Well, I have one, two, three, four, and five faces. And then a rectangular prism or a, a square based prism. I have one, two, and then three, four, five, and six faces. Okay, if I had a pentagon, and I'm not gonna draw this necessarily, I would have, well, you can probably guess it, I have seven. This hexagonal one up here, I have eight faces. It looks like if I have the sides of my, um, my prism, so a triangle gives me five. A square, four sides gives me six. Five sides gets me seven faces. Six sides gets me eight faces. So it's like the side amount. So I'll put number of sides plus two. And in this case, our pyramid was number of sides plus one. Just kind of an interesting pattern that we can find from this. All right, I'll quickly go through some of these different questions here. A triangular prism has how many faces, edges, and vertices? Faces, you can count them out. This would be a good time to pause the video and try some of these questions for yourself. But in this case, faces is gonna be five. Edges, let's just count them out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine edges. And the vertices, we have one, two, three, four, five, and six vertices. All right, number two, name each figure which is not a polyhedron. Explain your choice. All right, so A, I'm not gonna write this out, but since it has a rectangular base, I would call this a rectangular prism. B, it looks like it has a square base or a rectangular base. It looks like a square to me, so I'm gonna say it's a um, square pyramid. C is just a cone. And D is a triangular prism, since triangle is the base. And lastly, to answer which one is not a polyhedron, I would say C is not a polyhedron because it has rounded surfaces. All right, geometric solids are three-dimensional figures. They have length, width, and depth. They take up space. Flat surfaces like pages in a book, billboards, artist canvases are two-dimensional and basically lack depth. depth. Thus, to represent a three-dimensional figure on a two-dimensional surface, we need to create the illusion of depth. In this investigation, we practice represent three-dimensional figures in two dimensions. One of the easiest ways to draw three-dimensional figures is by parallel projection. That's actually what I've been doing this entire time to draw these three-dimensional figures. Okay, it's one way to sketch prisms and cylinders. Recall that prisms and cylinders have two congruent bases, one at each end of the figure. We basically draw the two bases set apart from each other and then um, with the corresponding vertices of those bases, we connect them. So for example, I'll just basically go through these steps with another figure. Uh, let's say I have a triangular prism that is a right angle for the triangular base. So here's my first one. And then kind of offset and to the right is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna draw the second one. Well, this top vertice corresponds to this top vertice, so I connect them. The right angle and the right angle correspond, so I connect them. And then this last vertice and this vertice connect them. And there's my triangular prism. Or maybe I want to make um, a cube like I did earlier. I'm gonna first make my first square, and then maybe it's kind of short. I make my second square a little bit closer and actually come inside of the other one. I connect the corresponding vertices, and there's my cube. All right, this one I'm kind of looking at it almost straight on and can't see all that much depth. All right, so we want to sketch in this case, we're just going to practice this. So take a second to pause the video and practice this, but we're going to sketch a rectangular prism, a triangular prism, and a cylinder using parallel projection. Okay, so rectangular prism, I'm going to make my first rectangle like this, and let's say um, my second rectangle is going to be way over here. This is going to be kind of a longer one. All right, there's my tri or my rectangular prism. And my triangular prism this time, I'm going to make it really big, kind of, kind of short. All right, there's my two, and I'm going to connect the sides. And then a cylinder. Um, this one 
in all of these other ones, we can kind of make it so that the rectangle actually looks like a rectangle in the base, or the triangle actually looks like a triangle. Even though a cylinder will actually have a round, a perfectly circular base, we can't actually draw it like that, or it'll come out like this, okay? And although that may work for some different ways to view your cylinder, most of the time it won't. So we actually need to squish the circles, make them ovals, so we have a better view of our cylinder. Still kind of connecting the two sides in order to show our cylinder. Now we can sketch these from different viewpoints, like I was just saying, basically by shifting the positions of where our bases are drawn. Okay, so you can practice that, but different viewpoints, you basically put the bases in different places, drawing those connecting lines. To draw our pyramids and our cones, we can begin by sketching the base. But kind of like our cylinders, we need to draw um, a, an oval or a rhombus or parallelogram in order to show the depth that we have without tr making the, the view of it really weird. So, for example, if I were to draw a cone, and you can read all of this, we are going to start with our oval that we talked about with our cylinders. But instead of drawing another oval, I'm just going to put a point right in the middle and draw our sides down. Now, one thing that we can actually do in order to show depth and show what's the back of the cylinder or what's the back of the cone, what's not, is like what they're doing here with dashed lines. So instead of drawing the entire oval, I draw the front and then I can make dashed lines. This is hard to do with this pen. Dashed lines on the back of it to show some depth. Or like with a pyramid, I make a parallelogram. Okay. And I'll kind of dash those lines in a second once I know what's the front and what's the back. Make your dot up at the top and draw those side lengths down. For me, how I view this, this back, um, this back side and that one is behind it. And so I'm actually going to redraw those with dashed lines instead. I always tend to do this afterwards so that I know better where my figure is actually going to be when I view it. Okay, and it does look different for everybody. So it's okay if you, your view is not exactly like mine. All right, so go ahead and practice with some of those. Um, drawing a pyramid, drawing a cone with those different dashed lines to show the depth and show what's what would be behind what those lines would be if this were an actual solid figure. All right, now the last little piece that I'll go through is multi-view projection, which displays three-dimensional objects from the different viewpoints that we could have, top, front, side, and what we call an isometric view. Now, what we, um, why we do this is think about different project plans, like if you were to build a cabinet or build a bookshelf, build a table. Typically, it's not just from one viewpoint that they'll give you. They'll give you the front view or the side view or whatever view you want. And they need to be drawn to scale and correctly. So, um, notice that with this view, typically you, you'll be given the isometric view and you'll ask, be asked to view, um, to draw the top view, front view, and side view. Different colors can represent different things. So if you imagine this little U-shaped block, the top view, it does look just like a rectangle, but how we show that these are higher than the actual middle is with different colors. So I have this middle and maybe I um, take and I say the light green is the edges that are coming up and the dark green is the ones that are a little bit farther away, something like that. And then um, the front view is pretty easy. We only see that U. We don't see any depth to it because we're looking at it straight on. And then the side view, yes, it is just a rectangle that we have. But we show this dashed line to show that, you know what, even though we can't see it, inside of there, there is a height change. So we can practice that with this figure here. Okay, and it might be a little bit tough for me to show um, with, these, with the pen that I have for this video, but I will do my best. So with this figure, we are going to, we have the isometric view, and we're going to view the top, the front, and the side view. Okay. And most of the time it'll tell you what's the front 
and what's the side. What I'm going to say is this is my front view and this is my side view, just to make it very clear. So the top, I'm actually only looking at these, um, these few pieces right here. So on my top view, if you were to set this on the floor and stand right above it and look down, basically what we would be seeing is one square up at the top, another um, couple uh, segments, and then our little jutting out piece. Okay, I made that a little bit too long. Definitely something to get used to. All right, so we have this figure right here. And how I could kind of differentiate between the different um, heights of these things is maybe I shade the top a lighter color and this part a darker color in order to show that it's um, a different height. Okay, now for the front view. So I'm looking at kind of these darker pieces right here, and it looks like we have this front view. So this higher piece, it goes down. And then this doesn't look any higher than the back piece, so it's just kind of a little bit higher like that. Now we can show the difference in that by maybe coloring um, this piece a little bit lighter and these pieces a little bit darker to show the depth. Okay, so you know what, I'm going to go ahead and do that here. Um, so this green, oh, let me try that again. All right, so this green is a little bit facing forward. And so is this top view here. And then my darker green is going to be farther away. And that's kind of how your eye would actually show it as well. All right, and lastly is the side view. So once again, I'm looking at this right side is typically what you're gonna be looking at as well. And if I were to only view it from that side, I would see this piece, the rectangle on the bottom, and then I would also see this top piece farther back. So to color it correctly, I would say this one's closer to me, and then this back one is a little bit farther away. And that's all I would see on the side view. So those would be my different figures to show top, front, and side view of this figure. Now I'm not going to go um, through the last piece that you can see in your book. I don't have it on these slides, but it's about drawing things from different perspectives, especially um, from further away. Um, you can go through that in the book, but I don't, um, I don't typically see those type of drawings in this point in geometry with course three. So we're just going to end there with this investigation, and I hope this helps you with your homework and for studying.